So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the built-in directive ng model, which is one of the most important and frequent ones that you'll be using. So ng model is what is used to achieve the two-way data binding that you hear so much about in Angular. How do we use ng models? Well, let's set up the simplest case. We're just going to set an input that we're going to type into, attach the ng model to my data. So let's put it in h1. Interpolate my data. And that's it. So what we've done here is, as you might have intuited from what you've seen before, my data is indeed being taken from the scope. So my data is a scope attribute. And here we're saying the data that is coming into this input, doesn't really matter how it happens, we're going to bind it to the model my data on the scope. And once again, that scope dot is implied. It's just my data. We should see that my data is being bound to the value of the h1. So let's try that. All right, well, that looks like it's working to me. So we can type whatever we want here, and it's working. What else can we do with it? Let's add in some more of these. You will see that there's four of these, but they are all bound to the same place in the model. So it doesn't matter which one we change the value of. AngularJS is synchronizing the value in all four of these inputs. What else can I do with this? Well, obviously typing is the only thing we can do. Any value change to the model is going to propagate. So if we have a button, we set ng click to my data, one, two, three. That's our button. If we press one, two, three, you'll see that value is set and it will reset every time. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, the reason two-way data binding works in Angular at a very high level is that Angular is always checking for change. Whenever a change happens to the model, it's going to update everything else that's attached to that model. And so here, all of these are bound to my data. This one isn't quite bound, but it is setting the value of my data. This, is obviously bound to the model since it's the string representation of what's in the model. And this is bound to the model since we're using the ng model to actually bind it to that model value. So all three of these are pointed at the same location and that's in a nutshell how Angular achieves a data binding. So there is one caveat to this and it's a little nuanced but it's important to understand. So because Angular uses standard JavaScript syntax, you are going to run into a couple of quirks here and there on things that are present in JavaScript. And the one here is based out of prototypical inheritance. So I'm gonna set up a scenario which might seem a little bizarre, but it's important to understand. So we'll put this in the H1, my data, and then we're gonna create another controller. And we're going to put this inside of the original controller, subcontroller. These are identical, except for the fact that one controller is inside the other, but they have the same bindings and they have the same interpolation. Okay, well, let's see what actually happens with this. So let's refresh. So we're gonna type in the first one. And we see that both interpolated values are the same and that all four are bound to the same value. Recall that this top one is the parent controller, the main controller that's on the outside. And this second set is the sub controller, which is on the inside of the main controller. So now watch what happens when I type in here. All right, now that's weird. Why is that happening? And if you notice, once we type here, this is not updating. Okay, so what the heck is going on? When the application is initialized and these controllers are initialized, my data is bound between them because subcontroller inherits from main controller. Since it is a child controller, it will inherit the models. The problem is that when you use primitive types on objects in JavaScript, the primitive types are not inherited in the same way as objects. The default inheritance is that these are bound to the same model. Refresh. We see here that these are the same. But as soon as you type in here, 
the NG model is going to realize that the sub controller needs its own instance of my data. And so instead of using the inherited one, it's going to declare a my data in its own sub controller model. And so this is broken and can't be recovered unless you refresh the page, which is obviously not desirable. This isn't the result of anything that AngularJS is doing. This is just how JavaScript inheritance works, and it's just a quirk of the language. The very simple way to get around it is to just use the dot in your models, and you won't ever have to worry about this. Just declare this as an object. So instead of the implied scope.myData, for example, you're just going to do myData.val or something as simple as that. And we'll just add this in all locations. So now when the model is inherited, it's going to inherit the actual model and not replace it. So if we refresh, we can see one, two, three, four, five. And then we type down here, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. This is working. So it has properly inherited the object that was passed down to it, and it is not overwriting that reference to a local model. The simple way to remember this is to just always have a dot in your model names when you're dealing with any kind of inheritance. It's going to save you a lot of headaches because this can get a little messy once your application starts to scale.